introduction. No, it wasn't 12 when I began, just for your information. The industry does have some uh, basic uh, requirements. So for example, you must be at least 21 years of age to start in this profession and uh, get a license. Okay? Uh, these are commitments in public education that began uh, way back when I first started out in this career. Uh, primarily uh, under the government's wing of the Money, uh, Money Sense campaign. In other words, uh, advisors in the industry go out together with, uh, the, in partnership with the government and we spread news about what to look out for when you buy policies, what to look out for when you deal with financial planning. Some of the pointers which were very, very well highlighted by Dr. Neil, so it would mean I can skip certain parts to that depth yeah, because it's covered to that degree. All right, so this is my family. That's uh, Isabel, 11 years old. Gabriel, 9 years old. So as you can tell, I'm nowhere near retirement, but I'm working my way towards that. Yes, all right. And that's my husband, Terence. Uh, he's a part-time lecturer at Republic Poly in information technology. And uh, he also studies at Biola University in apologetics. That's uh, distance learning. So those of you who are keen on the topic of apologetics, we can speak later and uh, he's very good at addressing the questions that the youths of today have, right? So that's us. Now, why is it important? Why is it important that we can manage this issue of uh, money? Why is it important for us to manage our money matters well? Because the whole concept here is about stewardship. God has entrusted us with what belongs to Him. These resources are His. He can take them at any time, right? It is at His whim and fancy. Anytime He can say, Oh, you're doing a bad job. I will take it away from you, right? So it's important that we learn how to steward what has been entrusted upon our hands. Now, uh, this parable is a very famous one. It is one of my favorite parables in the Bible. Because it tells us about how we should deal with what has been handed into our hands, right? It's not about whether we're beginning given much or little. It's about the faith that's involved in handling it. Just how responsible have we been in handling all these resources that, that's been given unto us. And uh, for resources, I might like to take uh, a little bit of extension from Dr. Neil's presentation earlier. He's right. It's not just money alone. It's your time. What do you do with your time? Is your um, other uh, commitments in life? You know, what are you passionate about? What do you think that's important? Uh, how do you uh, live life? Because time is money, right? Time is money, right? So how you manage your time is also important. Yeah. So we want you to know that in the parable of talents, you need to hopefully come to this phase where the master says. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been very faithful with the little things. I will henceforth put you in charge of many. Alright? Come and share in your master's happiness. You will understand the attitude that we should take towards money and uh, also to, to hopefully help us all be accountable at the end of the day towards our monies. Okay? So when you talk about planning finance, planning what does it actually entail? So there is a process to it. Yeah, there's some thinking that goes into it. There's an understanding that goes into it. Now, usually people ask me, hey, you know, uh, what is it about financial planning that you're trying to achieve? I will tell my clients, it is well done as long as you've achieved the goals that you set up to achieve with the appropriate sums of money that come out at the right times for you. Isn't that just all we want? Right? We have goals that we want to achieve. So we need to be very clear, understand, okay, what is it that we want? Is it retirement monies? Is it education for the children? Is it security for the children? What are our current goals? All right? Know the details of the goals. Understand, okay, what age do we want to retire? How long do we expect to live? Okay, this is a very important question, huh? I will say this, in today's day and age, if you read the papers, I think, was it two Sundays ago? Now we are talking about living to a hundred. Being a reality. Okay, so when we plan retirement, please do not think it will end at 85. 85 is the average age now. 
And this average age from the time I started work in this industry has been increasing over the years. Okay, so when I first stepped foot in the industry, they say, okay, we plan for retirement until 82. Then today's number is 85. So there's a trend, right? Now people are writing books to talk about 100, right? So we need to know the details of the goal that we want to achieve. Then of course, with some information that's gathered, when you speak to your planner, your advisor, then we do not some analytics. So we figure out how long your cash flow can last, bearing in mind, for example, the various expenses that you have committed to, uh, for, uh, assuming, of course, you're not changing your lifestyle. Then we want to forecast, for example, the streams or monies that you need in your MediSafe account because you will have those uh, hospitalization plans that we cannot throw away even if we age. In fact, you cling on to them even more in the, for dear life as you age. Okay, because we do not want to be a liability unto others. Yeah? So when we analyze, we can ascertain just how far off we are from our goal. Then we can determine, okay, is there anything practical as a step that we can take to work towards the goal? Is there an amount that I can dedicate towards saving? At what rate do I need it to grow before it can accomplish the goal? Okay, this is the part where we explain investment. Uh, according to Dr. Neil's uh, understanding, he's absolutely right. Interest rates of the past and interest rates of today are a far cry. So how are we expecting to grow the monies at the same pace by just leaving it in the bank? All right, that being said, yes, uh, we want to develop a plan that allows you to sleep in peace. Okay, we develop a plan that doesn't make you wake up in the middle of the night and then you go like, ah, tama, tama, you know, my money, ah, my money, ah. And then you send me your text, your text, your text, and then I go there, I cannot sleep really because everybody is bombing, bombing, bombing my text, okay? It doesn't work that way. It doesn't, okay? So there's a way to plan, including planning for investments, which you must learn to understand, okay? Then there's implementation. So after we set a plan in place, all talk and no action means nothing. <coughs> nothing. Okay, so don't talk to an advisor, talk, 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 talk until the cows come home and then do nothing. Just take the report and go back home, free, 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 and be happy. Okay, this doesn't work. You must set in place, implement a program. If it's an endowment plan, you implement it. If it's an insurance plan, you implement it. You write forms, you pay your premiums. If it's an investment, okay, you do your wiring of monies to a certain account so that it can start a portfolio managing thing for you. Alright, so there must be implementation. Now, this step is very important and it's usually the step that is missed by many people. Okay, periodic evaluation. Why? Because trends change. So like I said, when I first started work in this industry, I talked to the people, you need to plan to live until 83. Now I will tell them, hey, adjust, adjust. Huh? Then I must ask them, hey, your father, your mother, live to what age? Your grandmother, grandfather still around? Yes. Very good. Okay? So I have exactly one case that came to me because the grandparents are 90 over and both are still around on both sides. So they scared. Bring the father, bring the mother, say, talk to Kim. Plan your money. Is it enough to last? Okay? So we need to know certain trends that are happening and adjust the, the plans along the way, okay? Or for some of you who are very in tune with your medical insurance coverage. Who knows what I'm going to say next? Yes, tell me. Uh, hospital education for one. Uh, and then uh, planning for uh, income protection. Okay. Okay, so hospitalization is a key point. Those who are, who are unaware, in the recent last two, three years, when you receive your renewal notice on any of the shoe plans, the plans that you use your MediSafe account to buy and top up with some cash if necessary, so that in the event of hospitalization, they help you manage your hospital bills. Ah, these plans have gone up how many percent? Anybody know? As okay. high as 30%. Okay, very good. This is a good number. Okay, in a range of 15 all the way to 30, these prices have been adjusted. So if you have been gyroing your expenses and not taking a look, be aware. This means our goals need to be adjusted, alright? Okay, 
Now, I want to go through this life responsibility line, which will help you see and forecast as you walk through different phases of life. Uh, what are the commitments that are involved? What are the big commitments that require money? And then also the story about your disposable income. So it sort of summarizes what Dr. Mew said earlier. Okay, and we see that we have people here of varying age groups. So it's good. So there are people who are in their 20s. We are single, we are nice and happy. And all we are thinking about is freedom because we are out of school, right? Okay, it's time to work. It's time to uh, earn some uh, monies and then uh, hopefully be self-sufficient, right? Okay, then what do we try to work towards? We try to work towards that phase where we find our ideal partner in life. Right, you meet Mr. Prince Charming, you meet Miss, Miss Princess, you know, and you say, okay, let's get married, right? And you need to work towards that, yeah? What's important? The big commitments here, buying a house, okay? Starting a family, okay? All this happens around the time when you get married. Okay, of course, these age groups differ from one person to another. This is a general guideline, okay? So you can be starting later, but it has some implications, all right? Okay, then subsequently what happens? So as the children grow older, they go to school, and then they finish their education, and they start earning their income, and then we subsequently realize that, oh, they got white hair already, yeah? It's time to retire, okay? Okay, so this line represents our commitment throughout the various stages. So what happens is that after we leave school, our commitment will actually rise and rise as we buy a house, build a family, give birth, okay? Then it only starts to decrease when the children grow up, right? Then as we retire, the commitment is even lesser. It's only to ourselves already, okay? The children should be self-sufficient, financially independent, I pray, okay? Uh, for parents out there, I... I advise you, as I advise my elderly, elderly clients, please do not plan excessively for them. Okay? Huh? Uh, don't, don't think about doing this, doing that. So many things to do for them. And then uh, they just stretch out hand. Ah, give me money. Okay? Don't do that. Huh? Don't do that. Okay? Because we need to find a way to help them be self-sufficient. Okay, then we talk about disposable income. Okay, this part, when we start working, the income starts to grow. Our commitment rises in tandem. And then when family starts, we realize that, hey, our expenses super shoot up. Okay? Uh, this is the phase where kids are in the story. I also want to highlight to parents, eh, those of you who have young children, do not bombard your children with don't know how many classes and the percentage of your pay that you spend on all these art classes, swimming classes, don't know what piano class, don't know what class. Eh? Uh, some that I've seen can be as high as 40% of their pay. Ah, very good. Every together with me, right? <laughs> Cannot. Okay? So if you see people around you who do this kind of thing, okay, please talk to them, okay? They need to know that there's more to come. Huh? There's more to come, right? So what happens is the ability to save will go down when the children are really at their... Uh, where, where you have the most number of children, yeah, when they're all young, uh, because your play school is expensive, you spend a lot of time to take care of them, etc. Okay, but when they grow older, then you start to be able to save more, and during retirement, because our income decreases, then it goes down. Okay, so this is a general picture. This will help you as you walk through the different phases of life to understand, hey, if I do want to do any sort of planning, Okay, from the first step of financial planning, which is talking about being self-sufficient. Being self-sufficient in dire circumstances. Yeah? This is the part, this is roughly the age where you see the biggest gap between your commitment level and your disposable income. And this is why we say, okay, insurance is important. It is the first step that you take in terms of your financial planning so that you can actually achieve self-sufficiency. Sufficiency. Okay? So the goal that you should work towards at this phase of your life as a fresh grad out of school should be to build the liquid reserves. Yes, we are in agreement 6 months to 12 months. In fact, a lot of things that he said, we are in agreement. <laughs> okay, so I'm not yours. Mm, okay, never mind. <laughs> Don't label other advisors. <laughs> okay, build liquid reserves. Alright, work towards having 6 to 12 months so that you can prepare for 
uh, strange circumstances that could happen. Be self-sufficient financially. In other words, your money is your money. Your father's money is your father's money. Your mother's money is your mother's money. Do not cover. <laughs> okay, do not. <laughs> I, I will say this. Uh, as a fresh graduate, I started out in this trade. It was not easy in the beginning, uh, beginning years, naturally speaking. But I told myself, no, whatever is the case, no taking money from father, no taking money from mother. Okay, if I have to do something, of course not, you know, legit stuff lah. Do something, make it work. I do something, make it work. If I have to take on two jobs, three jobs, I do it. Okay, because I should not be a burden to them at this phase of my life. All right. Now, I want you to understand, those who are at this age group, what it is that you have as resources apart from cash. Because at this phase, usually what you have as cash is probably very small in amount. Huh? Because we just started out at work, right? Okay, I need you to remember that you also have resources called your CPF accounts. Now, what are these uh, accounts meant for? What are the interest rates that's allocated to them? And what are the options you have in terms of investments, for example? Okay. Ordinary account gives you up to 3.5% per year as interest. Special account, okay, up to 5%. Medisave account, up to 5% as well. Now, ordinary account is meant for housing. It's about 10 to 15% of I earn. Alright, that's the, the magic ratio. Yeah, 10 to 15% of, of what you earn. Okay, I do, however, want to caution that this is an important step. Why? Because uh, so I've been in this trade 19 years. The first claim that I actually filed for somebody who, who got diagnosed with cancer is actually this Mr. Tan that I'm going to tell you about. Okay, So Mr. Tan met me in 2003, one year, just one year after he started work. And we did all the different plans for him. And in the end, how much did he pay every month for insurance? He paid about $400 a month. All right, this is the amount that he committed. Then in the end, what happened? He got diagnosed with lymphoma at age 28. Mm. Ah, good, I got stunned look. I got stunned myself. I work in this industry. The first thing that I thought was for somebody as young as 28. Okay? But because he did this, we were able to pay him this amount for claims. And we still have his hospitalization bills covered up to about 80%. And to date, he's ho holding on to dear life for his hospitalization plan. Because it's not easy for somebody with his health history to buy any more of these things. Okay? So he carries it. I said, no, please gyro it. Never break, never break, never break. Okay? Never let, never let the cover drop. Otherwise, we have trouble in the future with any medical expenses. Okay? So this is the first step that we want you to be, uh, be doing for yourself. Now, next thing, we've covered this topic in great degree earlier. Living within your means. Okay? So this is real. And... Uh, from my experience of counselling people, mind you, uh, there are people who have children who come to me for credit counselling. Okay? They are in their 40s. Then they suddenly reveal to me one day, Kim, I need your help. And I say, what happened? Okay, come, 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 talk, talk, talk. Okay? Private time, private time. Okay, then tell me what's happening. Then I realise, okay, this is a trouble. Okay? And we are talking about people who are earning decent incomes, $7,500 a month. Okay, but they are debt. And according to the Credit Counseling Bureau, uh, the biggest credit card debt that year, based on this article, okay, 2015, is $1.5 million. $1.5 million, I can buy a house already. Okay? Okay, so why is it important? Okay, this is one of my favorite Bible verses to reference why we should not get ourselves in, in an issue such as credit card debt because it's a reflection of our desires. What is it they were thinking to store up? What is it, right? If we are thinking about storing treasures on earth, then okay, we are getting ourselves into trouble because it's not of value in the perspective of our lot. Okay, it's not of value, eh? Okay, and then this thing is important. The rich rule over the poor, the borrower is slave to the lender. The people that come to me for counselling are uh, bordering depression. Okay, why? Because they feel enslaved to their debt. Okay, I want you to live a life of abundance, right? The Lord says, it's not to be lived in this way where you feel you are enslaved to a debt. Okay? Okay. 
my evaluation of this, if a client comes to me, I say, if you work in a regular 9 to 5 job and all you do is just stay in that one office, you take the car, drive yourself there happily, whoa, 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 then you drive yourself home. <laughs> Please, you don't need a car. Okay? The MRT is good enough, the Gojek, the Grab, the whatever is good enough. Right? Okay, but if you're like me, you work in a sales job, your income correlates to your mobility and your mobility actually adds to the story then yes but please no need to buy a fanciful car every car that has four wheels drives <laughs> correct right every car with four wheels drives huh? okay so there was this story my husband said hey uh, it's time for us to change the car they said okay okay we we'll walk in the showroom and hey this is very nice very nice uh, i don't know what don't know what you know we can have seven people sitting in it then i like why do I need seven people here? Uh, no, when we pick your parents up, uh, when I pick my parents up, uh, then I say, okay, how often is that? Uh, once a week? Not even, right? Once a fortnight? Yes. So I said, so what are we doing with a car that's so big? That guzzles the patrol? Right or not? What are we doing? And yeah, I said, okay, you know the price of this big car, I can buy the price of this small car and a second-hand smaller car. So I told him, does it make more sense to have two small cars as opposed to one big car? Then he said, oh yeah, it makes sense. Then after that, I told him, rubbish, uh, why do we need two cars in Singapore? <laughs> Come on up. Huh? Okay? So don't need, don't need. Huh? Need and wants. Okay? Differentiate between your needs and your wants. Huh? So lifestyle needs to change. If you have a car and you're in debt, please. Uh, throw the car away. Okay? Throw the car away. Huh? Uh, shopping also do less of it. Okay? So you need to consolidate the bills. See which ones are on higher interest rates. Change, change the rates if you have available means to do so. Do your budgeting. People are working towards getting married. I want to give you all the big warning sign that some of the people I counsel get straight away into debt because of the wedding. So is it a lovely affair? Okay, I, I want you to be practical, huh? put it that way. Yeah, you're entitled to your nice dreams and all that. Yes, 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 yes. But it's going to cost you an arm and a leg, which we cannot afford. Huh? Then tolong lah, tolong. Huh? Tolong lah, don't need the fancy food, hotel, don't know what. Huh? Then parents yourselves, huh? those of you who are parents, huh? I see some of you on page, huh? do not impose your... <laughs> do, do not impose, huh? unless you are prepared to pay for it, okay? <laughs> okay, I'm not kidding, huh? all right? Okay, then those who uh, understand Chinese customs, you might want to also evaluate and talk about this with your spouse. Managing money is an integral part of spouses' lives, all right, of married couples' lives. Okay, so I have seen people who quarrel almost to the verge of divorce because of money, right? Because they all have different perspectives. They want this lifestyle, they want another lifestyle, so, okay? Then they're like, uh, wedding, they say, oh, the... Husband side should pay, right? We think they should pay. Then never say. Never say, then they take the ang pao. Then how? Where the money go? Right? Okay, so those who are planning marriage, uh, understand in, in with respect to Chinese customs and stuff. Okay? Okay, so let's conquer the next phase now. Okay, so now that we've gotten married, you know, we want to buy a house, right? Uh, what should we be uh, working towards for this age group? We should be working towards growing our wealth. Means you already can live within your means, you can save some money, you can now examine how to grow. Okay, so there are options to invest your cash, options to invest your CPF. Okay, I want to teach some concepts now, okay, with respect to investing. Okay, that you can have a think through. Uh, and uh, it's important to understand why, because you have options how you want to invest a lump sum. It can be done in a lump sum fashion or at one go, or it can be done at different times spread out into different amounts over the months. Okay, this is called dollar cost averaging concept. Okay, I usually explain it in a very simple way. Okay, uh, we go to the market every day to buy eggs. Okay, we just take one dollar. Okay, and every day we just go one dollar to the market and buy eggs. Okay, if the price is high, we buy less eggs. Oh, because bird flu, the chicken didn't lay the egg. Ah, uh, correct. Uh? Okay, uh, if the price is low because suddenly, don't know why, they have so many eggs popping out, okay, okay, we buy more eggs. Okay, by doing this, over the long haul, you will see that your average price is an average low. Okay? 
So this is a concept that helps in investing. So some programs for investments are particularly making use of these concepts if they allow gyro every month. Okay, so you just gyro a fixed amount in. Expensive, buy less. Okay, cheap, buy more, buy more. Okay, so that's how you average a good price. Yeah? Okay, next. It's the children who are bringing in the parents. Why? Because they are worried. I'm going to get married already. My father, my mother, I don't know whether they are okay for retirement. <laughs> then later they fall sick. How? <laughs> huh? Then am I supposed to pay for it? Huh? Then of course, we don't abandon parents, right? If they fall sick, we must pay for it. But how? How to pay for it? Correct not? Okay, so my suggestion is to avoid being part of the sandwich generation. If you can, just casually ask your father and your mother, hey, you have medical insurance or not? Do you? Uh, anything happens, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how, how I'm going to cough up the 800,000 cancer bill, you know? Correct? Okay? So it's a very practical approach. Okay, just FYI, you can use your Medisafe account money to buy policies for them. Okay? So it won't cost you an arm and a leg. There are options available. Okay? So you can do things like hospitalization plan. You can also, at this age group, I suggest, buy some simple accident cover. Uh, because both folks cannot trip and fall. Uh. Their bone is very brittle. Uh. Once they trip and fall, a lot of things happen. Uh, correct? Uh. Uh, those who are senior, you know. Uh. Okay, my grandma trip and fall. After that, I uh, can count dollars and cents with people. After that, cannot leave. <laughs> okay, then I go like, oh, okay? okay, so we need to take care of their needs in this area. Talk to them. Make sure that they're well set up. And uh, of course, subsequently, uh, the next speaker will talk to you about setting up wheels, etc. That's also part of the part of the story that we need to take care of for parents. Uh -huh. Okay, some of you can also consider if you have enough and you can manage, you can actually top up into their retirement account. Okay, those who are 55 and above will have a retirement account. Now, when we top up for them, uh, we get tax uh, relief up to $7,000. Okay, we talk cash. Huh? So some of you who don't want to give them cash, you want to top CPF account ahead? Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Huh? The, the retirement account earns interest at good rates. Then it subsequently translates into a stream of money for them. Okay? So that's also something that can be done. Okay, I highlight to people at this age group, please go and do your CPF nominations. Okay, we always do the revocable one so that you can change them. Okay, should family circumstances change? Okay, should you decide you want to give more money to uncle or who or who are you decide? Okay, so you can do a nomination. Uh, nominations also I mean by insurance policies. So if you have policies, do up the nominations, okay? Because processing will be faster. Okay? Uh, then it's less expensive as well. Uh, this is the cost. Uh, if you decide not to nominate your CPR savings, we give money to the government. <laughs> Don't be so kind, uh, huh? Okay? Don't need, uh? Okay? <laughs> 